All right, this is the uh, passenger's rotor off the front of the Camaro, 2017 Camaro SS1LE. You can tell where it's been blued because it does get a lot of heat. So we're gonna see if it can be turned a little bit because there's some pulsation in the brake pedal. Brakes work fine. I tracked it just a few days ago. So the part you haven't seen is this was nicely cleaned up here. Ooh, it's so smooth. It's like a baby's bottom. You may hear a voice in the background. <coughs> That's the overqualified technician who's working on it. And if he says anything, which would be helpful since I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. So, overqualified technician man. How do you know how much you can take off? You read the, there should be a speck in it somewhere. Okay. I don't know, where does it sit? I don't know either. Doesn't have anything on it. Oh, it's speckless. Not to be confused with feckless, which is a whole different word. So if you don't know the spec, how do you decide? You're gonna drive it when I'm done and tell me how long it lasts. Oh, okay. If it warps again relatively quick, well. And you can tell by uh turning it that it's warped. It should be able to. Ancient light doesn't hold itself up anymore. So this is bluing. That's because of the heat. Yep. So you're saying I I shouldn't break so heavily? I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that yet. And that helps keep it from vibrating, right? Yep. Oh, so you get it real close. I just want to make sure I can turn it all the way in without hitting the hub or something. So it just starts to go scrape, scrape. Oh, and it sounds work. I can't see the other side. So. Okay, am I in your way? So is this done sort of by the sound and feel? The... Kind of. I'll actually reposition the rotor and verify that is the right pattern. And pattern meaning you rotate the rotor, rehook it down, and then see if you get the same, same. sort of yep. vibration. If you look, it might be hard to see with the sun, but you see how it starts kind of there? Yeah. It gets thicker and then tapers off. And oh yeah, thin, yep. And it does the same thing on the other side. So when you rotate the disc, you'll then see if it does the same pattern? Yep, we're going to see if it does the same one. I'll just make a line right next to it. And, and that's close. It's the same, and I know I got the rotor at the center. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it around and see if it does the same pattern. Okay, so yeah. It starts right there. I might have went a little deeper on the second one. Yep, I see what you're saying. It definitely matches. Yeah, so we know the rotor's centered. 
Okay. And so you just touch it so you can hear the high spot. I'm just, you know, I bring it all the way in. And then the machine. And it all itself feed out. Yes, up there. So you can't leave that thick part there. I don't like starting the machine with it. Even though it's touching material now. So you're taking off that rusty. Yeah, I'm taking off the ridge. The ridge. So I'll show you. I won't be able to actually get because. Well, that's fine. The pad doesn't go there anyway. Exactly. So this one's gonna. When I actually start making the first cut, this one will already be touching material. This one's hanging off the inside. Does that make sense? Yes. That's what I'm trying to do. Because the, uh, because of the hat. The hat. Now this is where I'm actually going in to the disc. And how do you decide if these blades are sufficient up to the job? Okay. It, it sounds good to me, but what do I know? And so the rate of cutting is machine dictated, or do you yeah, probably? Yeah, you can change the speed and all that on it, but this is what I found. Okay. And this is just telling us that's just is working its way out. Okay. So. I'm guessing, although I don't know, that the slower gives you a finer. In a sense, but I, yeah. So you can change the speed of the way or how fast the road is Okay. And it sounds even. Yeah. That's probably all I need to do to get that part. Just take a little off. Now, do you know how much you cut off? It's a small off the other side and six off the inside. 6,000? Okay. And so, there, probably done four and four. Yeah. so is there any way you can look up on a like all data or something that's so you good? know if they do this stuff in Okay. So it may be a case that they say you can't really turn these or why wouldn't they very rarely do you have a turn or anything? Okay. Just because they they wear it just as much as a fabric now. So they can you go through a full set of pads and you try to machine that rotor to be too thin. Okay, so that, that's the idea of a pad flat. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, it's definitely good. Okay. Oh, what a beautiful sound. All right. All right, life is a series of decisions. I had the rotors turned, did a nice job. We didn't know the spec. You can see, well, if you're here, you can see just a little bit of blue left here, but we didn't want to turn it anymore. Nice job, good work. Uh, the pads are, I'll get a light, get them on here. You can see, see if I can get it, where on the pad, which is right 
along here right in the center. You can see also the area that was glazed, which matches with the rotor, which is right there where it's glazed. So these are the original General Motors pads and rotors. They did a fine job and they worked fine in, except they were pulsating because they were obviously warped because they had been overheated. And this is a compromise this rotor is great for the track. It was set up for the track, but still couldn't handle the intense heat, which is why we had the problem or why I had the problem. And after discussing with Forrest, I then gave a fellow, uh, Dan, Dan the BMW man, who I've been tracking with, gave him a call because I wanted to know uh, what the torque specs were for the uh, caliper bolts. It's 90 foot-pounds for anybody who wants to know because these are aluminum. Apparently, you don't want to over-torque them. And on top of that, I said, what kit would he suggest? And he said, oh, go with this gyro, gyro, gyro disc with the Hawk DT70 pads. So that's what I did. It seems a lot. I spent, what, 40 bucks having the rotors turn and I cleaned with the pads. But in hindsight, I said... Why go to all that trouble to set it up and then be in a situation where I'm going to have to do it again? Because it's, it's primarily a track car. That's what it gets used for. I don't daily drive it because, eh, I don't really care. It's not my idea of a daily driver. So I will, I ordered the pads, the Hawk DT70s front and rear, and I ordered the gyro disc uh, rotors like uh, Dan suggested. I will reassemble this. I mean, I've learned a lot, so it's all good. Obviously, I spent a lot of time and money. Well, not a lot of money. $40 is nothing on a track car. So I learned something, and that's really the point about all this car stuff is to learn something. And I was able to talk to a lot of people, understood what was going on. They understand the use case for this car so they said just go for the really good rotors and pads and don't purchase new replacement gm rotors and pads because they'll be up in the same situation in two or three years and it'll be fun to sort of install some really quality high-end stuff that is made for track use only. Of course, it'll be squeaky and all that other good stuff that track pads have. Uh, but cost-wise, it's going to be about the same. Maybe a little less with the GM stuff. But, eh, why not? Like I said, if you track a 1LE, a 6.2 liter uh, Camaro, it is an amazing car. This car, everybody thinks of it as a beast. It really is a beast. It's fast, it corners well, it breaks well, even with funky pads and funky rotors. It's an amazing car. Now, yeah, it's sort of like a bunker looking out, but I don't care. I know how to use mirrors, so it's not a problem for me. I can see just fine out of this car. It does have a backup camera. So all in all, uh, the uh, company I ordered this out of is from Illinois. So I suspect I'll get it within the next week or so, if God wants it that way. But I will reassemble all of this so I can get the car off of the list. Lift, sorry, list. I have a list. Lift. And uh, these are 90 foot-pound, the torque specs for these, for the caliper. And we'll go from there. Yeah, all in all, it looks good. Uh, Dan, the BMW man, did suggest RBF 660. It's a fluid. He just said, hey, by the way, if you're going to do this, do RBF 660, which is what I use. Use it on all my cars that are high speed. And that's what I've got here. So it's been an interesting day, tearing it all apart, getting the rotors turned, and then changing my mind, talking to people, getting some more aggressive track focused pads did give me a chance to check everything out which is all good so i hope uh you've enjoyed this as much as i have i've learned a lot and that's all that really it, life is all about is 
knowledge. Just love the knowledge. So hopefully I'll get an idea of when the rotors and pads will show up. Maybe I'll just leave this thing up here and then install it. And I'll see what happens. Love y'all. Hope you're having a good day. Oh, God, it got to 80 degrees today. I guess I should show the great outdoors. Oh, my baby Prius. I love that car. But it's such a nice day. What, it's uh, August 15th, 2022? Awesome day. Oh, God, it's just glorious. Wind's coming out of the north, northeast. Probably about four or five miles an hour. It's dry. It's amazing. Did mow the lawn a couple of days ago. I resumed the watering over here. New plants do love their water. And uh, so it's all going well. Life is good. I hope you're having a good time. I'm happy. I hope you're happy. Talk to you later. Bye.